So this is where I jack up this car, just on the pinch weld. And then once the jack is high enough, you can put a jack stand under, and then you can release the tension, let your jack down gently, and then do the other side. And then you need to place your jack under the pinch weld, uh, jack it up so that it's even on both sides, make sure the car is nice and level, and then put your jack stand under. You need a 12.36mm socket, a thin wall, if you don't have a thin wall, grind it down like I have on the outside, and uh, that will get off the axle nut, and I will show you that now. So to get the axle nut loose, this is showing how to do it with an impact gun. Ah, oh, fail. I do this all the time. I'm only on speed two, and I need to be on speed three. Let's try that again. There it is. The axle nut. So if you don't want to break this loose with an impact gun or you don't have an impact gun You can just put a little spanner or a screwdriver or whatever you have around in here So slide it inside the disc my finger is here um, Wind the you can see this moves here you wind it around until it just touches the brake caliper This is a breaker bar here rather than an impact gun and all I'm going to do is just put my foot on here to break it loose. Right, that's it broken loose, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's loose. It might still be quite... Oh no, it is loose. There you go. Look at that. There you go. Once it's broken loose, it's relatively easy just to wind it the rest of the way out by hand. And there is your prize. So you just need to locate your socket. And then break the bolt loose. As you can see that is it is now loose, no problem. And now what we'll do is we'll remove our screwdriver and then we will rotate the just that around there until we can see our next bolt. Just there. And now we need to lock off our brake caliper again like we did for the axle nut. And then we just need to remove these bolts by hand once they're all broken loose. Once you have all of the bolts loose, the drive shaft should just drop away from the gearbox like so. So this is the other side, which I am going to 
and deal with the impact. So you can see, I mean, you can still do it, it's just faster, so. So I guess it depends how much time you want to save. And you don't need to lock off the, um, don't need to lock off the uh, brake disc or anything like that. So it just takes out a couple more steps. So if you do have an impact gun, I suggest that you just use it. Now that both axles are disconnected at the gearbox end, and the axle nut has been removed from both sides of the car, from the driver's side and the passenger side, um, we just now need to remove the drive shaft. So they're loose, but they're still stuck in there by the suspension. Okay, so we're going to start this side with hand tools. These bolts aren't usually that tight. Break loose all three of them. And on the other side, we're going to do the same thing, but um, this time I'm just going to use the old impact gun. Just for speed more than anything else. wedged in the top there. Just gonna put a wedge on the top of it here. Just so that it catches the threads. And then that's it. That ball joint there is loose. Okay so now we know the drive shaft moves we're gonna push it back inside and then pull this over. So grab the caliper and just pull it over that way and as you can see the drive shaft is now loosened and then once it is loosened all you need to do is just fish it out of there there we go boom there it is one drive shaft out now I'm gonna remove the drive shaft from this side here um, and I'm gonna do it in real time just to show you I don't know give you an idea of, of what it takes Know about you, but uh, I didn't think that was too bad. I'm going to try and remove most of this boot now. Remove those, that little cable tie. Same on the other one. Gross, this is such a dirty job. And uh... such a filthy job and the next part of it is I'm just going to try and clean off as much of this old grease as possible
Okay, so I just picked up this uh, this shaft here, and a couple of the um, ball bearings fell out. So we're just gonna free up the uh, the rest of them. Let's see what we are what we're dealing with here. We'll clean all this up in a minute. See what kind of condition everything is in. And then we'll decide where to go from there. We'll just do the same on both of these, I think. Really careful with these little slimy suckers, huh? There we go. Okay, then, so there we go. Those things are now split apart. Will that come off of there? No, that's stuck on there like that. Alright, um, next thing's next. Need to do a little bit more cleaning. What I've done here is, if you don't have the um, snap ring pliers, you can just hook the end with your pick, and then you just bury your pick underneath like this, and then you can go around the outside with a screwdriver to prise out the rest of the clip. There you go. And then she's out. Not too difficult. And then this just slides up off of the top of that. Try and keep things in order as well as you take them off. Try and catch this for a second time for you. So what I want to do, make sure the clip moves first, so I just want to knock it around a little bit, make sure it moves freely. That shouldn't be too hard. It's been covered in grease for ages, so it should move relatively freely. And then I just want to hook my my pick underneath like that, like I showed you a second ago. See that? Hook my pick in there. You can go around with a pick if you don't even have a screwdriver, but this does make it a lot easier because it's got a lot more leverage on it. Especially when things get super slimy, which they always do in these stupid shafts. There we go. And then that's the second circlip there. And now we can slide off the uh, joint itself. Put those two together. And now slide off the old boot. Bob's your uncle. Now we just need to clean this up a little bit more. So what I need to do now is just carry on doing um, a little bit more cleaning and again just going to use some brake clean and some paper towel. I'm just going to start putting this back together so that won't go in like that you have to put it in sideways and then twist it like so drop that into here like so and then we'll just put in these little um, little ball bearings one by one this one Ah, crap! Ah, I was going to find that in a minute. Right, that's five. And then it should start getting a little bit more lodged in there as you go around the joint. 
There we go, push that one in, twist it, that one's in, and then we just want to pull this one here up just so that we can get the ball bearing in just a little bit more. You'll be careful not to go too much, otherwise you pop them all out, and that's a pain. Essentially, that's it. I know I dropped one, um, but all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and well, I'm going to go and find that now. I am back from my quest, and I have discovered the ball bearing. So now all I want to do is just work this. There we go, like so. Get my last ball bearing in. Clip it all together. Bob's your uncle. And that's it. And then when they're both done, they should move freely. I'm doing this deliberately to show you something. Should move freely like that, as if it would in the car. This one here, I've lodged it. See that? How it's like it's not moving. So I need to. That's wedged in there somehow. So I need to free that up before it can go into the car and it may involve taking something back out and then doing it again. So I've built this shaft here. Uh, you can see it moves nice and freely. There's no grease in it yet. Uh, I prefer to assemble mine without the grease. I'd rather squeeze the grease in from the front and the back and then just work it in like that. Um, it just makes the assembly a lot easier. And I know some people prefer to grease it and then assemble it, which works fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, you're just going to get a little bit more filthy along the way. So, I'm going to show you now how to assemble this on the next shaft. So the first thing I like to do is to take the boot and then take this uh, little uh, crimp clamp and I just like to get it roughly started. So basically there's some little divots in the end here and you just push them together so that then they hold and then you just slide that over there and then once it's all uh, assembled and all greased what you do is there's a special tool which I'll show you in a little bit and you crush this together and it pulls it all tight uh, but you want that as tight as possible so I'm pretty happy that that's, that's tight so the original shaft comes with this little rubber um, gasket type thing I suppose I'm not sure what it's for, whether it's to like help stop vibration or whether it's to stop grease escaping because these are just two metal surfaces going together. I assume that it's probably to stop grease escaping considering they're all just bolts up. So I'm going to make my own since my kit didn't come with one and I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, gasket paper. I'm just going to make the outside any decent car parts shop or store you ask them for gasket paper they'll sort you out no problem so I'm just going to cut out this shape now next thing is next just going to just going to drill these holes here through for the uh, And when you're done with cutting that out, it should look a little something like that. So I'm just going to put the boot on first. Put that on there good and proper. There we go. And now there is a little washer. This one here. That goes on first like so then we slip on slip on our shaft, our CV actual CV joint make sure our bolt holes line up shall we um, there's a little recess in this side here sorry I've got that the wrong way around that goes on there first. This goes on this side here, like that, when we go to bolt it up to the car. This goes on that side. And then we have this little debris. 
circlet which goes on the end here. Just use a pair of pliers to open up the face of it. Crap. Now I have to go and find that as well. There we go, shoes on. Simple as that. So, if I say simple as that, it's like fourth time we have to spread this apart with the pliers, and then I had to push this other side down. Once it's in, I just like to get my hammer and little screwdriver and just give it a couple of little taps like that, just to make sure it's properly seated and in the groove. And that's good. Okay, now I'm just going to turn it around the other way, do the same thing again. Once it's all packed with grease, I just like to move it around. Make sure it's fully lubricated. That looks okay to me, that one there is ready now to be bolted back up into the car. Just a little tip on these, because they bolt up, if you tighten up this clamp here, if you crimp this, and your bolt holes aren't in line, you'll really struggle to put it onto the car. So I always just put a bolt in, make sure that it's lined up first, and then I crimp it. So these pliers here, are to crimp up, crimp up this uh, clip on the boot. You basically just put it on. Go. I basically screwed that up. You can see how I went off center. I usually stand right over the top of it to get some body weight on it uh, when I crimp it up. So I kind of failed that one. I couldn't really properly see what I was doing because I was trying to not obstruct the camera. Um, but essentially, once it's crimped up, that would have stayed on there just fine, but I knocked it off because it was off center. Um, and that will bother me. I'm just going to put a Jubilee clamp on this one instead. So here's the clip that I did first that I didn't screw up. Um, and you can see when it crimps it, it pulls the whole boot tight and it really digs in so that gives you a really good seal. And once you've cut your gasket around the, um, the bolts and make sure it doesn't come in contact with the uh, inner part of the CV joint and all the ball bearings, you should look something like that. It's kind of difficult to see it right now because of all the bolts. But you have to trim it quite carefully so that it doesn't foul anything. And now they're ready to go back into the car. Just going to fish this uh, drive shaft in on this side and then we can start doing up the bolts. So once you get the bolts started, it's just the same as it was before. Snug them up. And then turn the drive shaft a little bit. And then move on to the next bolt. 
so on and so forth until you've gone all the way around. Just do them up hand tight at first to make sure nothing's binding. Now we need to do is put the shaft into the back of the hub. And I want to line up this ball joint as well. Lined up, there we go. She's in, and the ball joint's sort of in, but it's not bolted up yet. So, the torque setting for these bolts is 20 newton meters and then 90 degrees. There we go. Now just the 90 degrees. I can't remember what the torque setting is for the inside. I think it's 10 newton meters, then 70, but I can't remember. Um, essentially, the most important thing with these is you have to tighten them down and then go back, like gently, and then go back around and, and tighten them down all the way. Otherwise, they don't see evenly, kind of like doing um, a clutch or a flywheel or something like that. Uh, so that's what I've done here. I've tightened them down twice, and I've just... I went over them again with my impact just to make sure that they were tight, especially considering that this car, these came loose before, so I'm especially suspicious. So the torque setting for this um, axle nut, or drive shaft nut, hub nut, whatever you want to call it, is 50 newton meters and 45 degrees. This side of the car is now done. Uh, the axle, the drive shaft is tightened up. The drive shaft is bolted up um, and triple checked and double checked to the gearbox. And the ball joint, which we undid, has also been tightened up and they've all been torqued down to spec as well. So all that's left on this side is to put the wheel on and drop it back down on the ground. And then on the other side, I still need to put the drive shaft in, which I'm gonna do off camera. So I've just got the car in gear at the moment and just let in all of the CV grease inside there um, just separate really nicely. I like to do it before I put any load on the car. So I'm just going to go and turn the wheel lock to lock now and then I'll put the wheels on and this job will be finished. So these are all of the tools that I used um, to do this job. I've got my big jack, a couple of jack stands, uh, my creeper just save you lying around on the floor a uh, big bottle of brake clean big hammer i actually had two hammers that i use a um, couple of torches then there's the paper towel you don't need impact guns but as you saw it does make things faster and easier but if you don't have it no problem uh, some big extensions and then sockets wise you need a 17 a 13 a 36 12 point for the axle nut and then i can't remember which one this is this is a female female spline bit a male spline bit rather, it's an M6, and then a 13mm normal socket. And then I have my ratchets, uh, my torque wrenches, 
and then the needle nose pliers for taking out the circlip. You can use these ones here, um, but if you don't have them, you can get away with using these ones like I showed you. And then I've got my pliers that I used. I also figured out, this is so irritating, it wasn't me that screwed it up, it's actually my my tool broke. See that? Finally gave it the ghost. I mean, it is really old, but that was lame. <laughs> So that's it, it's not a great deal of tools, um, but it can be a bit intimidating. I suppose if you were gonna mess one thing up on this job really badly, I think it would be not seating this socket properly. And if you round out those bolts, you're in for a very, very bad day. So just go careful with that. Everything else is pretty straightforward like you saw.